Hi, Stacy Murphy here with a short video on drip irrigation systems. This is a quick video which basically shows you how to plan uh, out your drip irrigation system, what the basic components are, and then how to put them together. And I'm shooting this video now because I got a phone call from a dear friend with a garden close by and she said, help, I'm spending way too much time watering what can I do? And so I went to take a look at her garden and essentially it's a courtyard area with three beds and each bed is along a wall and they're maybe one to three foot wide. And, um, and basically her complaint was that she was waking up every morning having to uh, water with a hose because we're living in Southern California where it hasn't rained in two months. So basically the plants have to get water somehow, right? So uh, in her case, what that made the most sense was drip irrigation. She doesn't have anything that really stores water in her beds already in place. So you can build your beds in that way, but that's out of the scope of this video. So basically she's got her garden beds in place. And so what makes the most sense in this, in this instance is drip irrigation. And what drip irrigation does really well is it puts water exactly where you want it. It puts it right at the soil. And the reason why you want water, especially at the soil level, is you don't want water on the plants because that can induce soil or waterborne diseases onto your plants and also here in the hot sun if there's water on your plants they can burn so you want to get that water right at the soil level which is why drip irrigation works really well and the beautiful part about drip irrigation systems is that you can control how much water that you're putting out so you can conserve water and you can put it on a timer so you never have to think about watering ever again so now instead of spending her time watering she can spend her time harvesting and uh, eating the food, which is what she really wants to do. So she's very excited about this system. So here's what we did for her today. All right, so what do you need to know in order to set up your drip irrigation system? Well, the first thing you need to know is what all the different components are and, and what their purpose is. And then we can start to design the system. So essentially the main components are, first uh, the, the water's gonna come out of the building, in this case out of a hose bib. And from there, what we want to do is we want to have a filter in place in order to filter the water. We don't want any big particles getting into the hose because that can clog up those hoses. And once hoses are clogged, then what are called emitters, which are what sends the water out into the garden beds, they can get clogged with those particles and they don't work. So you want that filter in place to keep that, that debris from entering the system. And then from there you want a pressure regulator in place and in this case we're using a 30 psi pressure regulator which is typical of garden systems and we put this in place because if the pressure from the hose is let's say surging up or down that pressure surge can uh, can affect our system and can actually blow out the emitters if, it, if the pressure gets too high so we want to regulate that pressure and keep it constant. So that's what that 30 PSI regulator does. The next very important component is the timer. And this allows us to set the timer for any time of the day that we want to water and for as long as we want to water. And we can walk away for a week and hopefully if the batteries don't die, we don't have to water. So very important component here. The next component in the system essentially is what you will connect the hose to. So a, a hose for a drip irrigation system is not like your typical garden hose. It's a what's called poly tubing and it's essentially a plastic uh, tubing. And in this case, we have half inch tubing that we're going to feed into our garden beds. And so we want a way to attach that particular tubing to our system and so in this case there's an adapter uh, basically what you're going to do is there is a barb what's called a barb and you're going to push the hose all the way on to this uh, fitting and you're going to push 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 really hard get it over the top of that barb so that it's really in place and then there is a the, the part that you screw down and clamp that piece over the top of that tubing so that it's a secure fitting so that now now is connected and you now have to have tubing that can you can run into your garden now you have this half inch tubing is that what we're going to use well actually what we're going to do is we're going to use tubing that has what are called emitters that are inside the tubing. So there's two different kinds of tubing with drip irrigation systems. There's tubing where the, the emitters are on the outside and, and 
there are some tubing where it's on the inside and we chose the ones on the inside because we find them to be more effective. They don't clog as much as the external emitters. So this is what that tubing looks like and you can see where the emitter is uh, inside the tube where the tube is kind of um, pushing outward and you can see that emitter on the inside. So what we're going to do in order to connect the large tubing to this smaller emitter tubing is we have this little um, punch basically and we can take the punch and we can poke a hole in the larger tubing and then we can basically um, put a fitting in and we have to press really hard to get this fitting in and it's basically going to clamp down on the wall of the tubing and then we can basically push the small tubing onto the other end of that connector. So now we have a large tubing going into a smaller quarter inch emitter tubing and on this emitter tubing those emitters are spaced 12 inches apart so that's where water is going to come out. So uh, other than that the only pieces that really uh, are added to the system are end caps and uh, in our case what we're using is on the on the end of the filter we're putting on a valve that we can turn on and off so that water doesn't come out that side and at the very ends of the tubing of the large tubing we're just going to bend it back on it on itself and use what are called infinity connectors and this ensures that uh, no water can escape that way because it basically creases that larger tubing and then on the smaller um, tubing on the quarter inch tubing at the very ends we have barbs which are uh, pushed into that tubing which are end caps so that that's all the components of the systems and then we also have uh, stakes metal stakes that we can use in order to hold the tubing in place so those are all the components now now it's really just about figuring out if you have all the right pieces you need the right length of tubing so what we did in this particular garden is there are those three areas that we're going to water. And so what we did, the, the hose uh, is sort of in the center of those three beds. And so we took and we did a T fitting uh, off of the main line and we sent uh, one set of tubing into one set of the beds. And then we basically ran a, a tubing over into the other two beds from there. So just to make sure that you have all of your components, your next step is essentially to lay it all out, lay out all the tubing and make sure that everything fits. And so what we did is we basically ran the emitter tubing along the edge of the beds and we cut them to length. And for beds that are, um, when they were between one foot and two foot, we basically ran two lines of this emitter tubing down down the down the garden bed and then in the really wide area the three foot wide bed we actually put three lines of tubing and it's hard to see them because the bed is so full of greens but there's three lines running in this particular bed so basically what we did is we cut those all to length and then afterwards when we realized that we had enough tubing uh, to run for the whole site then we came back and we connected everything at the end now so that now your system is essentially set up so your next step is to test it and you want to be careful when you test it water is something that is very uh, when it's high pressure it can do some damage to your soil so you want to run your test this way the first thing you want to know is you want to make sure that water is getting to all ends of your system so your system in this case we only we're only running tubing you know 20 feet or something like that and so we know there's enough pressure to get that 20 feet but if you're running tubing let's say 100 feet or 200 feet uh, you want to test and make sure that you're getting water all the way to the end point. So this first test is very important. And the, the way that you do this test is you essentially leave all your end caps off to start. And so what you'll do is you'll turn the water on and you, and you have two people. You have one person at the valve who turns the water on and off and you have a second person at the end who can see water coming out. And the minute they turn it on, you say, yeah, we're good, turn it off. Because you don't want to over water that area. You don't want a lot of water pressure shooting that water all over your soil. So once you know your ends are, uh, that water is reaching the ends of all your, all your system, then you want to put your end caps on and then you basically turn the system back on and you double check 
that all the emitters are working and you can walk the line and you can see them spouting water and even if you can't see them spouting the water you're going to see little wet spots underneath each one of those emitters so that's the way that you test to make sure that everything is working properly so that's a really quick video about the different components of a drip irrigation system and how to put them together all you really need is a pair of really sharp scissors so that when you cut that tubing you cut a straight line and other than that, it's just some physical strength of pushing that, those tubing pieces onto those barbs. And so anybody can do it. And this particular project, uh, I believe she spent $60 on a garden kit from a company and it had all the pieces in there for us. And uh, we then ordered a timer. So I think she spent a, a little under $100 for this whole project. And it took us a couple hours to lay it all out and put it together and test it. Now, if you're in an area like us in Southern California that doesn't get a whole lot of rainfall, you can also pair the system with a rainwater harvesting system so that that's where you're getting your water from. In this case, we're hooking it up directly to her hose bib on the side of her house because she doesn't have a rainwater system in place, but that's one of her next projects. So if you enjoyed this garden gadgetry, you'll want to check out Garden Hack Summit. It's an online free event and I'm hosting 12 visionary gardeners who are sharing tips, tools, and techniques which uh, help us enjoy our gardens a whole lot more. They help us save time, energy, and money. In this case, we're saving a whole lot of time and possibly conserving some water in the meantime as well. So check it out, gardenhacksummit.com. Hope to see you there.